All right, so check this out. Here are two graphs of the same exact motorcycle and the same dyno on the same day. Notice something yet? The one on the right has a higher horsepower and torque rating, but it's the same bike, so what gives? Yeah, this is gonna be a can of worms. So listen, today we're gonna be talking about correction factors. Um, but more importantly than that, we're also gonna be discussing the importance of a proper base calibration. I know, it's super riveting stuff. Listen, I know this is gonna be kind of a hard watch. So, to help your little neurons activate, here's some footage of an RR being tuned, because of course that's gonna be the next video, okay? I just need to get this out here first. Yes, that is the next video that we're coming up with, so stick around for that. I don't know when we're gonna be finishing it because honestly, there is more caveats to that bike than I thought, uh, but it's coming. Until then though, let's start with the basics. Engines breathe air, and air's moody. Ask any runner from Denver how awesome it is to run at sea level. It's essentially the same thing with engines. Temperature, humidity, altitude, they all change how much oxygen your engine takes in. Dyno testing is an essential part of tuning, providing critical data of the bike's performance. However, raw dyno numbers can be misleading because engine power is significantly affected by atmospheric conditions like temperature, air pressure, and humidity. So to ensure consistent and comparable results, regardless of when and where the dyno run is performed, correction factors are applied to the raw data. Correction factors adjust the measured horsepower and torque to a standard atmospheric condition, allowing for an apples to apples comparisons between different runs. There are several widely used standards. The first on our list today is SAE J1349 by the Society of Automotive Engineers. This is the most highly recommended correction factor for anyone tuning Harleys. SAE corrects the numbers to a standard of 29.235 inches of mercury, approximately 99 kPa, at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees Celsius, and 36% humidity. Its strength lies in its consistency and repeatability. Even if a dyno run on a very cold day might show higher uncorrected numbers, converting to SAE provides a reliable, repeatable benchmark. Next on the list is STD. Uh, this factor typically corrects to a slightly more favorable condition of 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which often results in a higher displayed horsepower number compared to SAE. Essentially, colder, denser air in STD's math means bigger numbers. It's like weighing yourself on the moon and claiming that you lost 50 pounds. While it might look better on paper, it's generally not as repeatable or consistent as SAE across different days or environments. It's worth noting here that there are other correction factors out there like DIN and JIS, both respectively the European and Japanese standards. But for this video specifically, we're gonna be talking about the American ones because those are the only ones that matter. While it's not enforced in the Wild West world of tuning, it's critical for any reputable tuner to always correct your dyno runs to SAE. Why? Well, STD was originally introduced in the 1950s. It was originally intended to perform uniform testing on engines under 20 horsepower. It became the de facto dyno baseline through the 1970s and 80s, and in June 1974, J607A became the reference version dyno operators still call STD today. But by 1980, the Society of Automotive Engineers revealed their first issue of J1349, 1980 which established the modern SAE correction factor framework. And then by August 1988, J607 STD was officially canceled when the Society of Automotive Engineers moved to the new J1349 SAE. Since then, there's been multiple revisions of SAE, including a major rewrite in January of 1990 that set that 25 Celsius and 990 MBAR reference now used by chassis dyno software like ours with the most recent revision dating back to December 20, 2011. So then which one is more accurate? Well, the short answer is SAE. Simply put, it ensures that the results from the dyno are comparable 
and reliable, helping accurately calibrate the ECM's volumetric efficiency tables, VE tables, for optimal performance everywhere the customer rides, not just in specific conditions. Now, in terms of which one to use, SAE or STD for your specific use case, honestly, when it comes to specifically Harley-Davidson tuning, there's no reason you should be using anything other than SAE. I would say the general rule of thumb is use the same correction factor that the OEM uses to publish their numbers. There's no reason to go and switch up to other correction factors when Harley's using SAE themselves. That is the true apples to apples comparison that most people are looking for anyways. However, even with the most accurate dyno run using SAE correction, the foundation of a truly well-performing motorcycle lies deeper in the base calibration of its ECU. While your dyno results give you the corrected horsepower figures, the ECU needs precise foundational data to ensure those figures translate into optimal real-world performance. It's here that the concept of the proper base calibration becomes life or death to the tuning process. For flash tuners like our Power Vision, their primary goal is to calibrate the ECU. This means making sure the ECU's internal air tables accurately reflect the actual airflow of the engine. In layman's terms, the ECU continuously monitors inputs like intake air temperature and outside air pressure to calculate the actual oxygen content in the air. This calculated oxygen content combined with volumetric efficiency tables and target air fuel ratios allows the ECU to determine precise injector pulse width and spark timing needed for proper combustion. The base cal is critical here because it contains a hidden yet vital setting, the map read time. You see, Harley Davidson's come with a specific sensor called the MAP sensor, which stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. This sensor functions as both an engine load sensor, telling how much work the engine's doing, and the barometer, essentially sensing outside air pressure. This map read time in the base cal instructs the ECU on the exact crankshaft position at which to read the map sensor to get an accurate measurement of both engine load and critically, the outside air pressure. This precisely timed reading ensures the ECU knows its true atmospheric conditions. The importance of this becomes starkly evident when engine components are changed. For example, installing a different cam profile significantly shifts the pressure waves within the intake manifold. If the base cal doesn't have the correct map read time for that specific cam, the ECU will receive an inaccurate reading of the outside air pressure. This leads to a critical problem. The ECU will not be able to make proper corrections for changing environmental conditions, such as altitude and temperature. A motorcycle tuned with the wrong base cal might perform adequately in the environment in which it was tuned, but it could run too rich or too lean when written in different altitudes or varying weather conditions because the ECU cannot correct properly if it doesn't know the actual airflow through the engine. This fundamental accuracy is why Dynojet provides specific base calibrations, emphasizing that choosing the correct one, especially based on the cam profile, provides a good foundation for tuning. These base maps ensure that the map retiming is correct, giving the ECU a correct starting point for its complex calculations. Without this, even extensive fine tuning of VE tables on a dyno will be compromised. And the ultimate goal of making the bike run proper wherever the customer rides it is going to be undermined. So get your base cal correct. That's all I got for you today. Until next time, stay tuned. Funny enough, um, I've been binging a lot of House MD as of late. Um, they're not making season 10 of Suits anytime soon, and I'm still waiting for season 3 of Severance, which you should watch. Um, and I guess House is dry and brutal honesty might be rubbing off on me because, truth be told, STD is fine for comparing pulls on the same dyno on the same day. But if someone's selling you gains using STD, I think that's when you should grab the penicillin. In fact, it got so bad at one point that we actually had to remove STD from our software back around like 2015 or so. Um, but if you go in there now, it's still there. So then you might be asking why, like I did when I was researching all of this. And basically the short answer that I got was just a lot of people wanted it back. Um, it's still used in contexts like NASCAR and other institutions using it. Um, to compare chassis and engine dyno results. 
Um, a lot of old dyno runs were corrected uh, in STD, so having it as an option today still allows for that apples to apples uh, comparison. So like, as long as you're educated and understand the difference between the two, I think it's then you're empowered to make your own choices. And honestly, isn't that what this is all about? Tuning, to make your own choices, to make it your own? I might just end it on that line right there. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah.